welcome everybody. This is Darlene Holly, and I'm here today with Shella Diaz and I'm so excited to bring this conversation to you and talk about money mindset and some of those things that get in our ways and hold us back from being the amazing human that we are. So Shella is um, knew at a very young age that she was different from other kids. She was able to see and feel things other ki kids could not. She didn't want to stand out, so she put her gifts to sleep, which I know so many of us have done over the years. Um, she's been married for 17 years and has two kids, um, two sons, actually. Um, for over 15 years, Shella has been on her spiritual journey. She's been hosting workshops for women to help them master their money skills. So, Shella, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. And it's truly my pleasure to be here. Yeah. So get us started. Um, I love to start um, our interview with just finding out a little bit about you and who you are and kind of what led you to start your business. So share with us. Oh, so I have been with Good With Money at a very young age. And then I was in the corporate world for 20 years, real estate underwriter, loved it, learned a lot. And when the company closed down, I knew that I wanted to do something else. And, you know, let us put the cards on the table. My big idea was to publish a book to help high school students master their money skills. Financial literacy plus life skills. So I published the book and I thought for sure I'm going to get tons of sales, tons of speaking gigs. That didn't happen. So um, then <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> but then I started to be asked to do my workshops for women. So it's mm -hmm. interesting, right? So I, I initially I thought that the high school, and it's still my passion, and I still do workshops. That's just at this point in time, now not how, um, you know, getting revenue from. But I started doing women's workshops. And the next thing you know, I started doing one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. So it's interesting how you're thinking you're going in one direction and then, but the opportunity, you know what I mean? So it's about, and so I made the sh shift and I started doing workshops mostly for women. And, uh, but it's been interesting, just truly an amazing ride to see, you know, connecting the dots from one, from one thing that I thought was going to happen and then to what it actually led me to something else. Yeah. And I think that happens to so many of us as entrepreneurs, right? Like we have this amazing vision and we have this like, um, desire, um, growing in our belly where we want to like show up and make an impact and have a legacy and do all these amazing, amazing things. And sometimes where we, in the initial direction we go to, like we shift during that time frame where we're like, we see new ways or where maybe it doesn't work out. Um, but I love that your heart is around helping young kids get set up for their financial future, because that's always been a conversation. We could talk all day about that topic, I feel like, but, um, so many kids when they leave high school they don't understand how money works like it's not something that we teach in the schools and even as parents sometimes i feel like some a lot of parents i know growing up with myself like we didn't talk about money in my household um if you asked like if we had enough money to buy something my parents would basically say like it's none of your business like you don't need to know how much money we make how much money we have so for me like i had to learn how to budget and how to, you know, buy the things that I wanted and the things that I needed and, and do that in a way that was super smart. And I made those mistakes. Like I was definitely one of those college kids who signed up um, at spring break to get a credit card because I got like a free t-shirt. Um, but I didn't know better. And then I had like five or six credit cards, you know, before I was even 22 years old and I had barely the income to, to pay the, the monthly payments, let alone <laughs> to get myself out of the debt that I was occurring. So I love that your heart is around that and that that's still also, a place. That's, that also, that's also where it starts, right? So my, my idea is that if we're able to get them to start thinking in a different way about money that early on, then we're, they're, they're hopefully going to avoid the mistakes that you and I made. Yeah. Right. And, and it, but also it's about the freedom that's going to allow them to have. Yeah. Because they don't have to go back and, you know, undo some of the mistakes. Yeah. And they'll they make learn. some mistakes, but it won't be as many as, you know, some of the adults, myself included, have yeah. made. Yeah. No, it's definitely a direction that I see um, a lot more people talking about and going into the high schools and sharing at a younger age, because the more aware they are, the easier it is for them to make those choices going forward. And yeah, they might still go choose to go into debt. They might go get six credit cards like I did. They might 
um, still go down that path, but they're, they're, they're smarter about it because they're, they're at least educated and they know how to at least get their self going in the right direction to get it out of it. Or if they're super smart and they listen to the things that we say, like, don't get a million credit cards to start out with, then it just sets them out for that solid foundation for that financial future. And also what that allows them to do as is, is, is adults, and I know we're thinking, we're talking about high school students and college students, but we're really talking because when you don't have the amount of debt, right, um, then it's going to allow you to maybe take a job that you want versus one job that you have to. Mm. Say more about that. Tell us more. And so let's take that from a job to entrepreneurs. So if we don't have to make $7,500 a month, we're going to be able to say no to that client that we know is not a fit for us. We know that we can help them. We know that our skill set is what they need, but we know that that client is not ready. But we take them on again because we need to make our monthly obligations. But it's that freedom, right? It gives you that freedom where if you don't have 75, let's say that you have 35, you can say no to that client and it brings you more inner peace peace of mind, less overwhelm, yeah. right? Because we're not talking and it. That's just such a beautiful place to be in yeah. when you do, we can say no. Yeah. Because so many, like our society, I feel like, you know, has trained us to where, you know, just get a credit card and pay um, above your means. You only have to pay $200 a month and you can buy that $3,000 item that you've been wanting and you don't have to save up for it. Like it takes away some of like, um, the surprise that comes with it, like where if you know that you want a $2,000 item that you save up for it and you pay cash for it versus getting yourself in debt because before you even paid off that one credit card bill, you've already are on to something new that's shiny and that you have to have. And so you're snowballing to where it's building up. So I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up, right? And I know I'm going to be dating myself here, folks. However, whatever happened to layaway? right? You want that item. And I've seen some stores recently, they are doing that. You want this item and you start saving towards it. Yeah. And it, I think and, it's, it's so free, freeing to do it that way because you're, you're building up to it. You're taking the time and the energy to save up. You're pulling more resources, maybe um, taking on a new client or finding ways to find that money so that you can have that thing that you want versus just going into debt. <laughs> and causing that emotional stress because you're right as entrepreneurs if we have you know five thousand dollars worth of credit card monthly payments or even 200 or you know six hundred dollars worth of monthly extra expenses because of that debt that we have given to ourselves we, we take it on ourselves right like we have to own it <laughs> um but it just gives you so much more so choices give, i like to share two tips one if you or somebody you know has credit cards, and it could be business credit cards, it could be personal credit cards, it doesn't matter. I invite you to add up three months worth of interest. So how much interest did you pay in three months? Yeah. Every single one of my clients that has done that, this has been a game changer. Yeah. Something happens when you're able to see that amount. The amount doesn't matter, right? It could be $600, it could be $1,000. But once you're able to see that, let's take $1,000, right? That's, that will be $4,000 a year that you're paying in interest. Oh my gosh. Yeah, just hearing what? those numbers, like it's, it's crazy because yeah, you, you think you're paying, you know, $1,000 for the item, but when you add up like the $38 every single month for the next like three years, it takes you to pay it off. Like you could have bought six of them. <laughs> But also that helps you, right? Because when you start thinking about, oh, what could I do with $4,000 if I had that in my account? Yeah. Right? It, and it just begins to play. That's what we talk about. Give that mind something to do, right? What can you start doing to, to trick yourself? Let's face it. There's yeah. no other way, right? Because when you see that, what if I had that $4,000 in my account? What could I do? How could I invest it? You know, what, what will, how will that help me? How will that serve me? How can that $4,000 every year for five years work for me? Yeah. No, it's I, love, I love that thought process because we, so often we don't think about it and we just say, oh, it's just $38 this month. 
Um, and we don't think about the consequence of like the long term of what that $38 each month would have looked like in your bank account versus just being paid back out in interest. So I know that you work with women and you're super passionate now about working with women to help them with their money mindset and making sure that they are creating a a mindset for themselves around money that works for them. Tell me a little bit about what that looks like with you and your clients. Great question. So I believe that our money conversation that you listened to as a child has a direct impact on how you manage money as an adult. So whether is we don't have enough to buy that, whether they don't talk about it at all, right? Is that conversation you listen to that you carry with you as an adult? And so, you know, you don't, we don't have enough money to buy, you know, the party or we don't have enough money to buy the gifts. I've heard some, especially back East, I hear a lot. We don't have enough money to pay for utilities, mm-hmm. which is a big deal. Cause if it's, it's a, a snowing outside, you're cold. Yeah. Right. So let's take that. In, and I, I really like that. So it's, what was that conversation? Sit, be honest about what that was. And then how did that impact? How is that happening? How is that showing up in your today's adult life? Mm, so good. Putting out the breadcrumbs. So how do you transition that? Like um, I have a lot of moms um, and listen, that listen um, to the show and in my community Um, How do we rephrase those words then? Because I think a lot of parents, especially like we get used to saying like, oh, we can't afford it. And it might not, that might not even be true. Like I know I've said that to my children before and yeah, we can afford it, but we just don't need another millionth toy in the house. So how do we cautiously word those things to our children so that these behaviors don't become something that's so generational and carries on? That's a hundred thousand dollar question. And I'm so glad it is. I get chills. So that is so powerful, right? Because we want to sh- change that around, right? We want to shift that. So yeah. let's say that we are at the store and the kid wants that toy. The, what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much it costs. It doesn't matter, right? But, but allowing them to be part of them having a choice. You already have that toy at home. Yes, we can put it. We can set money aside to get that. And I got it. This is something that I did with my kids, giving them the choice. Do you want to have that toy? Yes, we can. But having them wait. And I don't mean wait months and months because kids don't have that experience, but just a couple of weeks. And that's when you also begin to bring them out and bring out a calendar. On this day, we're going to buy. I can tell you that 80% of the time, they're going to change their mind about getting that. Mm. Because it gives right. them the but, option to see other things that they might want or other things that they might need and switch that. And, and also that also brings in something that I did is that, yes, you can buy, we can get that, but first we're going to go home and we're going to, I don't say get rid of, but we're going to donate some of the other toys. We're going to make room for the new toy. Mm-hmm. And you're going to find that sometimes the kids don't want to give up their, their toys that they have, right? Yeah. But they are be they're part of the decision. Yeah. So I definitely like- stay away from, we cannot afford that, right? Because we can. If, if you want it, it we can. It, but making them part of the decision is a game changer because they're going to start seeing money. I also don't use the B words. I don't use budget, but we're going to put that in the spending plan, right? And make it, you know, you can get a little bag and they can start putting money away into the little bag. This is, we're going to start saving for that. And when we have enough money, we can go get it. Yeah. But it allows them, you know what I mean? It's just giving that. It's not that we can't afford it. We don't have enough, you know, any of those, you know what, let's put that in our spending plan. Let's, yeah. cr- let's see how we can, when we can get that. It's magic, magic. Yeah. Mom. And I can see how that, like, like those money stories, from our childhood can transition into us as entrepreneurs and especially women as we're growing our businesses. What have been some of like the key things that you've seen um, from women that have held on to some of those money mindset shifts from their, from being a child and how do you direct them to switch that um, to investing in themselves or um, not being afraid to make um, big changes for themselves or to, to, I guess just to invest in themselves because so many women are afraid to invest in themselves because they hear those old money stories. Yep. How do we shift that as a, as an entrepreneur? 
and then there's there's two two stories that I see that come up often. One, women tend not to charge their worth, right? Because it's something. Yeah, I see that one all the time. <laughs> it's something that comes naturally for us. So because it comes naturally for us, it, we think, well, you know, why would people pay me? So we don't charge enough. And then we, because we don't feel, you know, it's a gift. It's something that comes quite naturally. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're a hairdresser or a massage therapist, the, the, the industry does not matter, right? But we don't charge enough. And two, we don't show up for our business. We don't want to come across as salesy. We don't want to come across as pushy. We don't want to come across, what will they think of us if we're promoting our business? So we tend not to show up for our business and therefore we're not getting as many clients as we would like. Yeah. Both of those, they may seem different, right? But if you, you're beginning to see that, you know, go back, go back to what that money conversation was. I'm a huge letter writer, right? And write a little love letter, love a little compassion letter to that situation, to that event, because now you're aware of it. And now you can make different choices. Now you can choose to show up to that networking event and get uncomfortable and show up and show up for your business and start yeah. looking to maybe increase your prices as well. It will happen once you're able to connect the dots and no, once you're no longer subject to that story, you're the thinker of your thoughts. You can change the story. Yeah. You know, you can change that. You have the ability to do that. So with women not feeling like they can charge enough, um, other than journaling on it and kind of changing that story for themselves, what are some ways that you've seen them kind of take the leap where they start charging what they're actually worth and show up in that way? You know, it does take a little bit of work. I am a huge believer in meditation, right? And also reminders, which I still do to this day. You know what I mean? I remind myself and I plan out my day on paper. Right? Today, I'm going to share my business, which I always carry. Uh, today, I'm going to show up for my business and I'm going to share it with five people. Right, And I am worth X amount of money. My services are worth that. You know what I mean? Just that constant, you know, it's that record. And I do that three times a day, at least. Sometimes more, you know. Rainy days is going to be more, right? Because I'm... <laughs> No, because I don't, you know what I mean? Because you kind of not stuck, stranded. Yeah, of course, we can go out. But chances are I won't. Yeah. Right? Start changing that story. Start changing the conversation. Um, definitely meditation. Mm -hmm. um, reach out. You know, there's so many different coaches, you know, maybe an energy healer person that's going to be able to help you release that from your body cells. Right? Mm -hmm. It's definitely reach out, you know, maybe even within your own community. Okay. The, the other one, that accountability. Can you get a few three to five women, three to five people together and hold each other accountable? Be a support system. Find a support system. No judgment, no guilt, but be there for each other and see each other achieve your, whatever goals you set for yourself. Yeah. Powerful. And I think that's an important one too, because when you bring other people into the conversation and you have people to hold you accountable and to notice when you are maybe spinning or spiraling a little bit, um, or if you're having that self doubt, they're there to like notice it instantly and help move you forward with it versus where when we're at home by ourselves on a rainy day, it, it can be hard sometimes to, to move forward and to like catch our thoughts that we're, you know, that we're spiraling or that we're not really being true to ourselves and the story that we're telling ourselves. And also celebrating, right? Because if you have that support system, it's great for your low days, but I think it's just, if not more powerful, to have that support system for your high days, yeah. right? Because as entrepreneurs, we have a different mindset. So for you to share a win that you just did for your business, to share it with somebody that has a regular job, they're not going to get it. Mm. You know, it's not the same. They don't understand what, what you just achieved. So being surrounded by like-minded people that are going to be there to say, oh my goodness, yes, that's a win. You know, what are you going to do to celebrate? So it's, that's the power of being around other entrepreneurs. 
Yeah. And I love that you brought that up because it's so true. Like I forget who says it, but like you're only the best of the five people that you are around. So like positioning yourself around other people who are focused in the same direction as you that have the same heart for growing their business and they're actively working on up leveling their mindset and making sure the stories they do tell themselves are the right stories and they're not, you know, bringing themselves down. But looking at who is in that sphere of influence too and notice too, like are you at the top of that pack where you're always the one that they're coming to to help motivate and encourage and cheerlead on? Are you at the bottom where you're the one that's maybe playing the victim a little too much and like the woe is me card, but making sure you're somewhere in the middle and you have people that you're helping rise up with you, but you're also able to follow on the coattails of somebody else's success and the positive mindset that they have as well. I thought you were reading my mind <laughs> because I, I got to put the cards on the table. You know, um, because I am an intuitive and because I'm able to see the bigger picture, um, I'm able to see people's businesses, right? But I did find myself last year in 2019, not that I'm the smartest kid in the block, but I did find myself, you know, hanging out with people that where I was not learning from, mm -hmm. right? And, and I had to make that decision that that is not my crew. It's not that I want to give because I do, but I also want to receive. And which brings me to women, we don't tend to be really good at receiving. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, it doesn't, receiving in so many, right? So I, that was a, that was a choice I needed to make. So I did leave a couple of groups last year because that's not where I am going to grow. Yeah. And you have to put yourself, you have to constantly be evolving and changing. And, and it's so smart of you to realize that you've outgrown a group. And it doesn't mean that you don't have to, you can't be friends with them anymore, that you can't see them and check in and make sure that they're okay. But making sure that you're putting yourself in new situations where you are growing and you're continuing to move forward. Because the worst thing I think we can do for ourselves as entrepreneurs is stay completely stagnant and just stay like, there's that saying like um, a tree, like you have to be like a tree, like make like, oh, I can't think of it, like where you want to grow like a tree um, and keep moving forward. But if you're staying, if like, if you're not growing anymore, then you're, you're dying to a degree. Like you're not taking the responsible action of an entrepreneur where you have to continuously um, be making those steps forward and moving forward in a positive way. Let's put that for our, for, for your um, listeners. If you put that into a tree, into a plant and the plant is, is, is doing great, but it's outgrowing its space, mm. right? It cannot grow anymore. It's not going to blossom. It's same thing for us, right? We need to go into a slightly larger container so to give us room to expand and grow. Yeah, no, that's so true. And um, I have some succulents in my house and even out in my backyard. And the ones that are in the ground that have so much space mature and grow and are like, like 10 times bigger than the ones that I have in these tiny little pots in my backyard. And we, we grow in the space that we're in. So yeah, if you hit your ceiling and it's time to have that bigger pot or to try a new adventure, um, put yourself into a new networking group and build new relationships. I think that's an important thing to remember. I love that you brought that into like the pot perspective because yeah, you, you can outgrow that so quickly. And if you stay there, you, yeah, you'll, you'll still live, you'll still be alive, but how much better and how much bigger of a person could you be if you just allow yourself to be around a, a bigger positive influence versus staying in that small community? about allowing yourself to be challenged. And I don't mean that in a, you know, it's negative. No, it's a, allowing yourself to be challenged and get, you know, because when you're hanging out with other people that have bigger businesses than you, they're going to see your business in a different way. Yeah. And so it's allowing for that feedback to come in. So when I heard that I was, you know, let's face it, the ego is still very open. <laughs> so um, was it easy to hear? Heck no. But, you know, I, I, I was like, you know, if I continue to play small, I'm not going to make an impact. I, I want to make a huge impact. And if uh, it's not going to happen if I continue to live in that little pot. Yeah. And I think we get so comfortable sometimes too, right? Like we're, we're in that small pot and we're comfortable and we've got our warm blanket around us and everything feels familiar and everything feels easy. Um, sometimes it's hard to step out of it, but when you do, like, it's just amazing, like the different view that you see, um, from that new location versus just staying stagnant where you are. 
Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. perfect. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the scarcity mindset, because I know a lot of the women that I talk to, and even men, like we have that scarcity tendency where we're not sure how to move forward because you know we're afraid to, to make more money or what that would mean for other people. How do we avoid scarcity when it comes to our money blocks? We, we go back, two, two things, we go back to what did you listen to as a child? And if you heard it's not enough, we don't have enough, we don't have enough, be open to the idea that you, you may be carrying that with you, one. And so again, we go back, you know, you may need to do a little bit of work, do hypnosis, do meditations, because we got to retrain that mind. Yeah. But also be open to the possibility that by you growing your business, you're going to be, hang out, be hanging out with different quality of people. It goes back to something you said, right, Darlene? It's you, you, you're going to get uncomfortable because you're going to be held up to a higher standard. Because when you start hanging out with the folks that are making, doing the business or doing that, it's a totally different mindset. And so be open with yourself. You know, are you, that you're going to get uncomfortable with it? And it's going to be some work right? It's going to take a little bit of work. So you may want to start working with a coach to prepare yourself to get to that level, to prepare yourself to get to that next step. Instead of waiting and saying, not making any change, be proactive, hire a coach, have them help you get to that next level. Yeah. And especially when like a lot of those scarcity mindsets, they're not even our own, like you just hinted on, like these are um, past stories and things that we've seen um, from our childhood. So how do we, what if we're unconsciously aware, or what if we're not even aware that we've taken on these other people's scarcity mindset or their fears or their reactions? How do we switch that when, from our journey into somebody else's? Well, the fact that you're asking there, that you're already asking yourself that question, it's phenomenal, right? Because that means you, you're aware. And if you are not where you want to be, and I don't mean if you're not making the money that you want to make, because you could be making the money that you want to make, except that you're working 16 hours a day to do it, mm. right? So let's say that, let's take that, because that happens. You're making the money, but you're working long hours to make that happen. So start asking the questions, who did you borrow that? Who did you see growing up that was working or did you hear you have to work hard for your money? Did you hear either uh, uh, some, an adult? I'm not even going to say a parent because sometimes it's not a parent. Sometimes it could be the store owner that we know at the you know, co local store or your community. So where did you learn? Where do, did you borrow this information from others, right? Was it something that was told to you? Was it something around the neighborhood? and identified because it is quite possible that you borrow that and now you're just going to give it back, right? It was a gift that was gifted to you and now you're going to repackage it and give it back. And part of that is just making that, again, changing out the story. In the past, the story served me. It doesn't serve me now. We got to start talking to our mind, right? We got to start giving our mind the picture that we want to experience. Yeah. But yes. the fact that you're aware of, you know, that I know I'm not saying you, but the fact that they're aware of it, that means that they've done work. And that means that, you know, you're there, you're there, just, just uh, acknowledging, working and talking to somebody, you know what I mean? Just somebody that's going to be able to see, that's the beauty of a coach. They're able to see things from a different perspective. Yeah. It's that high level right. view looking down into what people are experiencing or what they're feeling. And they're able to tap in and notice things that sometimes are really hard for us to notice. Not that we can't notice them, but we're so close to the situation and we're living that life every day. We're in, we're in the trenches <laughs> and doing the stuff. And sometimes it's hard to like take that step back and really look at ourselves and what we've experienced and why we're on that journey that we're on. So just yep. being consciously aware. And I love that you mentioned too, it's not necessarily even just our parents. It's like the light, like the social of what we hear um, when you were talking that song, I work hard for my money popped in my head because we're, we're trained through music, through the news, through families, through social media and all these things. Like we were, 
I, I can remember as a child, like I was always told, like you work hard for your money. If you want something, you have to go out there and you have to earn it. And as an entrepreneur, like, yeah, you have to go out there and you have to earn it, but you can show, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be like, um, I, I can't stand the word hustle. Like the word hustle to me just feels like icky and sleazy and like, um, it just doesn't feel like a, it's not a safe word for me, like where you have to work hard and you have to show up and do things, but it doesn't have to be like that hard hustle where like you don't stop and you're grinding the wheel at all hours and you're working 60 plus hours a week because that was my story before I became an entrepreneur. I was working retail management and I was working 60 plus hours a week. I wasn't home with my son, um, with my oldest, who was my only at the time. And I missed out on all those pieces. And that was like, that was hard. Like you don't have to hustle in like that um, million hours a, w a week of work where you don't get to have fun and you don't see your family and you don't get to enjoy life because like life is so precious. You don't want to just give it all up for everybody else. Like you need to make sure that you're balancing it to where you're in perfect harmony with like your personal life and your business and how you're growing it. So. And also in that, you know, instead of doing the hard work and the hustle, it's just, taking inspired action steps right mm -hmm. you take it the steps but it, you plan it out you know i'm gonna reach out to five people to you know what i mean and when you plan it out you know and some people are better at that than others but when you plan it out and you do that income activities first and see where that takes you but that tends to get you so high that you want to keep doing more of that yeah. right but if you concentrate and you just do that and stay away from the getting busy, it's important for us to return emails. There's a lot of things that we need to do. The invoice, you know, there's other thing that comes with it. However, set time aside, whether it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, for that income producing activities first, and then the rest fill it in versus doing the other way around, right? It's it's similar to, you know, something I noticed when I was an underwriter. The one thing that I did notice is that the wealthy always pay themselves first. Mm -hmm. They put some money away into that investment account. They start saving for their vacations, where unfortunately not everybody else does that, right? Before, you know, we pay our bills, we do have fun, 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 fun. And if it's left over, we put it into, an, into a possibility account. Yeah. But what if we start switching it around? No matter how um, amount comes in, what if you start putting a percentage of that into this possibility account and investing in yourself? Whether yeah. it's investing, you know, for future, whether it's investment in personal development, possibilities are endless. But even yeah. that just shift, you know, if you get $100 in, uh, what if you put $10 away into this magical possibility yeah. account? No, I love that because you're so right. Like it just, it opens up, it shifts your mindset and opens you up to so much more where if you come from that scarcity mindset where you pay all the bills and all the things and you're like, oh, there's $2 left at the end of the day. Like we can go, you know, get a Slurpee at 7-Eleven. That's all we got left over for where if you'd pulled even $20 from the top and, you know, use that for a fun outing or saved it for a rainy day or put it into your future. It's, and it's just that subtle shift of getting used to paying yourself first. And I know there's a lot of gurus out there. They say you should do the 10%. You should do the 5%. Listen, folks, let's be real. Start where you are today. If it's $5 a month, do $5 a month and be consistent with it. Yeah. I believe that we need to give ourselves compassion and grace to start where we are. So let's say $5, $5. That's one less cup of coffee. Um, yeah. That's fine. All right. Let's do $5. Let's do, let's do $20 a month. And let's say you do that for three months and then you, you're going to get used to that. Then you increase that to $25. Start where you are and be consistent with it in yeah. compassion, compassion, compassion. And slowly doing that is so much more easy and obtainable versus if you just said, oh, I have to pull, you know, 10% of my income or 5%, like you were saying. But if you start with five bucks and you get used to that budgeting, and then all of a sudden you pull another 10 and it doesn't hurt as much and it doesn't feel like this big impact, but it gives you the ability to start, like to start the habit. And then it's easier to make it grow and put more into it as you go. And I love 90 days. Give yourself a grace of 90 days. 
Yeah. And now I'm not going to say you're going to do it every week or every month or whatever, but make up for it. But the 90 days is going to give you and help you adjust to that. And then you increase it. Yeah. You know, of course, if you, if you're able to change it up faster than that, awesome. But if not, just give yourself the 90 days because that's your mind is going to get accustomed to it at that point. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I love that tip because I think it's so important too to, to, to invest in yourself or to save for your future. And so often we, we pull from what's left. And I love the sh the, just that thought shift of pulling from the top instead of waiting to see what's left um, to use moving and forward. And also what you're doing to yourself, what you're doing to your mind, getting back to is you're telling your mind that you come first, yeah. that I deserve this, that I choose to put myself at the top of the list. Yeah, I choose right? so, <laughs> Yeah, well, and so the message, right? It's the message yeah. that you're doing to yourself, but also I believe the message you're sending out to the universe. And when you begin to do that, things around you are, are going to shift. Yeah. You're going to start to see things in a different way. Mm, so true. So what strategies have worked for you then for growing this business that you've created? Like how have you, what strategies have worked for growing your audience and growing your business? That's in a very, very um, strategic about it now. Um, definitely going, showing up and networking events was my primary there's uh, and, and now i'm doing the same thing online so i'm yeah. showing up online on facebook um and podcast interviews so and i don't i'm not putting them in any particular order necessarily you do this one second too no but um i get high going on to live events yeah. you know that I, I love the online i love that you and i are doing this and it's raining outside love it but you know um once or twice a month, I like to go in person and shake hands and talk to people. Um, and then online, you know, showing up online. I'm part of a couple of online networking events and podcasts because podcasts, you just never know who you're going to reach, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a Facebook live interview, whatever that may be, but getting out and sharing because you never know who's listening. And two, you never know who needs to hear your information? Yeah. No, those are great because, and I like that you only had a few. Um, I talked to so many entrepreneurs and um, they're doing all the things, which is awesome. Like there's so many marketing strategies that can work, but I always feel like it's great to find the ones that fuel you and fill you up. Like when you were sharing that, you, yeah, you like to do online marketing, but you also like to do in person. Um, I'm very similar in that way. Um, I switched my business completely to online a few years back. And it was going great, but I kept missing that in person. And about a year ago, I started a meetup group um, and I started networking in my local community. And that was exactly what I needed because it just gives you that a little bit extra fuel where you're able to connect with people in person um, and build relationships local. But then you also have at your fingertips like this whole entire world because you're able to go into Facebook groups and just show up and, you know, make relationships and nurture those friendships and grow that community that way versus going in and selling, right? We don't, nobody likes to be sold to, but everybody loves to build a relationship um, and find out how you work and what you do so that you can grow it that way. Now I am starting to jump onto the LinkedIn wagon. Oh yeah. Uh, I know some folks that have had huge success. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I'm following their lead and I'm doing what they're doing. And so, but that has been really great based on my connections on LinkedIn couple of weeks ago, I attended three live events, which is kind of, you know, if you think about it, you go on LinkedIn and you, I find three events. Well, I didn't find them. They were sent to me, but three live events that I got to go in my neighborhood. Yeah. And it's like that beautiful blend, I feel like, because you're able to make these relationships online and nurture them and find out about things that are local to you that you might not have known about in your everyday local networking but you're finding it's like a new avenue of ways to connect and build those relationships. Yeah. It's beautiful. Again, I'm not a pro there yet, but I am, and I, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm enjoying, and it, it's a different type of, you know, the different rules obviously. And it, it's just, it's going to take a little time. I'm giving myself a little time to learn, you know, it's a learning curve, just yeah. like anything else. Right. And 
you know, anybody that initially reaches out to me and the next thing they do is pitch me, I'm, I'm deleting them. I don't, <laughs> you yeah. get to know me, you know what I mean? Get to know me. And I just don't think that's a really, you know, don't ask me to marry you on the first date. I'm yeah. going to say no. <laughs> yeah. I love that you bring that up because I think that somebody's teaching this out there to just go and pitch to people without building relationships. And it's so the wrong way. Um, it's, you have to build that relationship. But one thing that I want to point out that you mentioned is that you're in it for a while. Like it, you're, you're learning and you're taking time to get um, entrenched in the LinkedIn. And that's one thing that I talk a lot with my clients about is you can't just try something one or two times and decide, Oh, it's not working. I didn't get a client. I'm going to go move on to something else. And then you start marketing in a different strategy way. And then that you do that for a couple of weeks and Oh, it's not working. And then you come over here and you do something else. Like it's so important to pick a marketing strategy and try it on for like at least three months and really give it time. Like the way you're showing up, you're building relationships, you're nurturing, you're constantly giving feedback and, you know, sharing, scheduling coffee chats or building relationships, but give it at least a solid three months of continuously marketing in that way before you say, oh, that didn't work for me. Because so often like you wait till the, it's like the 23rd hour and you pull away from it and you decide not to do it anymore, but that next client could have been that next conversation. And we, we give up too quickly. Our society is so quick to move on to the next shiny object. So I love that you're staying like in the game and willing to give it a shot and not just pull away from it. And I'm so glad you said that because I, I don't know anything about gardening, right? But we would not expect to plant the seed today and then eat the fruit next day or the vegetable next day, right? Yeah. So we go back to planting, folks. If we, you know, just stay in and allow that seed to blossom, whether it's the flowers, the vegetable, you know what I mean? And it may not be the right thing, but you're not going to know in one week or two weeks. Yeah. 90 days is a good benchmark. Yeah. And I can tell you the minute I started doing it again, I'm just following. I'm, I'm following my colleague's league. So I can't, I can't really okay. say I did it. She did all the work. She did all the programs and all, but within two weeks, I attended three uh, live events, right? Yeah. So to me, that was very quick. Yeah. Um, I didn't do the work. She did all the work. I have to give her totally credit, but yeah. she did the work because she found the events. I did the work because I was willing to show up, not yeah. knowing, not expecting. And I, I gave, I showed up and I always show up with how can I be of service? Who can I connect with? that is going to, you know, what connections can I make? I yeah. do not go in with how many clients can I get? Yeah. Do I want more clients? Absolutely. But that's not where I'm at. Yeah. Because I believe that, you know, again, I hate to be, you know, cheesy here, but the more people that you help and the larger the community that you have, they're going to think of you. Yeah. They're going to reach out to you. Yeah. It's all about those relationships that you're building. And when you go in and you're not like, buy for me, buy for me, buy for me, <laughs> like a, like a seagull. <laughs> He's like, mine, 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 mine. Like you're my next client. Um, but you go into it with just showing up and sharing who you are and finding out more about them and being like a referral person almost like it's more about coming in and saying, Oh, I have somebody I can connect you with. I'd love to partner you with this person. Or, um, who do you need to meet? Who, maybe I know somebody who could help you when you come from that givers gain type mentality where you're just showing up to give. It's such, it's such a more relaxed, easy way to do business because business comes back to you. People are going to remember that you sent a referral or that you connected with them with somebody that they um, needed to meet. And all of a sudden you're like, you put yourself into a different ball game. It's not as stressful or where you're having to show up to sell. In the minute I decided that I was going to join on LinkedIn, uh, three people that are LinkedIn experts showed up in my life. And, and at one of those live events that I attended, they gave away a one hour consultation for LinkedIn. And I had that call yesterday and she helped me recreate my profile. Wow. So I'm very excited because I really like it. I really, her insights into what's worked for them because they built their business on LinkedIn. Yeah. They build their, um, uh, well, in-person workshops on LinkedIn, a hundred percent LinkedIn, hmm. right? So somebody's already doing that. I just, listen, 
help me. I'm here. I'm coachable. What do you want me to change up? She had some amazing suggestions. I went in and I changed them just yesterday, folks, hot off the press. And I'm really excited to see what feedback I get from it. Yeah. Because he talks, right? If you read my bio, it, does, it tells you what I do. And I'm so excited. But Definitely. what am I, I really, my intention with that is that when you set your mind and I said, okay, I'm going to do this LinkedIn in, and then three LinkedIn people showed up, right? It's, it's just, that's just how it works. When it's, you put it out there. You're putting out there to the universe, right? Like you're, put, you're showing up, you're saying, I'm dedicated to learning this way. I'm going to put myself, I'm committed to it. And all these opportunities just fell in your lap because you yeah. were coming from such a, a, a great place. I don't know I another way to describe that, but like you just can't, you showed up the way that you were supposed to. Yep. Open to receiving, open to receiving. I love that. So what do you feel has been like the biggest struggle as an entrepreneur for you? The, what will people think uh, for me um, was, and, and it keeps showing up a couple of times, you know, but what are, are people going to think about my business? What are people going to think? And also the judgment, are they going, and now I know that it was not them judging me, but me judging myself, you know, but what do they think about my business? I mean, who can make a living doing this, you know, thing that, that Chella is doing. So just not allowing what other people think of me truly was a shift. Cause when I, I decided to write a chapter about that in one of the books that I participated in shifted. Right. Yeah. And it's not that I, you know, of course I would like for people to like me, but now I know that the people that I'm intended to work with are going to resonate with my message Yeah, and that I'm not for everybody and I'm okay with that. Yeah. You want to create content that like pulls your people to you like a magnet, right? Like you're attracting them in, but you also want to repel them. Like, there's certain people that are not your ideal clients. They're not your people. And that's totally okay. And that's why it's so important to be super clear in our marketing and our messaging and how we're showing up because we want to attract the right people to us. We don't want to work with everybody. Like very clear. even and if I thought I wanted to work with everybody, you couldn't, you, you can't handle that amount of people. Like we do one-to-one -one type services. Like we can't take on a million clients. I can take on maybe 10, maybe 15 if I'm stretching it um, each month, but you, you, you can only give so much. So you want to make sure you're working with the right people that are in integrity and have the similar values as you and not just take on those clients that you, that you don't need to. And the, 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 the people, I totally agree. And then also because you'll know that that person is ready, right? Because yeah. you don't want to have to carry them, right? We're here to help them, but they have to do the work. They have to do the digging. Yeah. I like to think of myself as with my clients, we're in the cave. I turn on the light, the gorgeous little light, but it's up to them to, to do the digging and to find their own light. Yeah. And if they're not willing to do the digging and if not willing to find their own light, that's not a client for me. Mm. You know okay. what I mean? It's, you know, and, and so sometimes we, as women, I hate to, but we want to help everybody because we see their potential. We see where they could go. But if that person is not ready to work, then we end up doing all the work for them. And it's not yeah. helping them. And it's not helping us because we're working twice as hard. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Um, as we start to wrap up our time together, I have a couple of fun questions for you, kind of like a round <laughs> robin, quick questions to dive into. So I'm curious if you have a morning routine and if so, what does that look like? Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. My day does not start without a meditation for me. A meditation for, for sure and planning out my day. And the third one is exercise, but that's not every day for me. You know, I, I gotta be honest, but my meditation, you no, know, I, I really, I'm not, you know, this morning I got a very early start. It wasn't gonna happen. Um, but my meditation, no matter what, I always, always allow time for that. And planning out my day, just visualizing my day. Those are two really important things for me. Yeah. I love that you visualize out what your day is going to look like, because I think when I take the time to do that myself, like it makes the day go so much smoother when you like envision like how that conversation is going to go, or you know what that interview is going to look like and what the outcome is going to be versus just going into it kind of blind. <laughs> and who would you say has been the biggest influence on your life and made the biggest impact? 
Yeah, that's such a tough one. I, I definitely would, the more I think about it, it it's my dad. You mm -hmm. know, my dad who definitely worked hard, party person, and I love that about him. Um, <laughs> so my dad, and, you know, my dad, and then also my sons. My sons, because I got to see life through their eyes, and they gave me a new appreciation for things. Yeah. And I invite, you know, I mean, if you start, if you go to a playground, not in a stockish kind of way, but if you hang out, <laughs> not in the stock, you know, <laughs> but you know, if you see kids and if you see even just like rocks or leaves, or if you're hanging out at the beach, if you look at life through their eyes and their excitement and their joy, oh, look, I'm getting chills. Be yeah. Because if you begin to see that, right? then you, you don't take yourself so serious. Yeah. So I still do that. I go to the park. I stay in my car. <laughs> but yeah. I like to watch. <laughs> and that's such a good point that you bring up because when you come from it from like that childlike perspective, life is so much simpler and easier and it's so fun still. And as we, as we grow up and we adult, <laughs> sometimes we put so many added pressures on ourselves and we make things harder than they actually need to be. But yeah, just come from it from that carefree perspective, I think is, is, I'm glad that you brought that up. It's such a cool way to look at life. And fun. Yeah. You know, you definitely have more fun. Yeah. We're here to have fun, right? We don't want to have these boring, stiff, stale corporate lives. Like we're entrepreneurs. We want to make this life our way, the way that we want to perceive it. And that doesn't have to be hard work and hustle and all that um, other type thing. It can be fun and relaxing and easy. You just have to show up and do the things the right way that feel good to you and um, propel you forward. So what's your favorite way to recharge? Do you have a happy place that you like to go to? I do have, a, I, I have uh, the beach. I cannot always get to it. So I like my mountains. Okay. Anywhere where there's just nature. I shouldn't even say mountains. I'm in Orange County. I haven't found any, but I, I like nature, you know, where I can just sit on the floor by a tree. It, it's just, there's something very peaceful um, that happens. Um, but I have to be a little nerd. So that and baking. Um, baking, I know, especially with this weather, I may need to go bake something right now. But baking, for me, baking, there's something that happens, something about you start from nothing, you start from ingredients, and then you create something. Yeah. So um, in the past, I was, I was not willing to share that I'm a nerd and I'm a baker, but I'm okay with being a baker and I'm being a nerd. <laughs> and I enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, embrace that. I think it's a beautiful thing. I don't think it's nerdy at all. <laughs> um, if you could travel anywhere in the world, if I just gave you a ticket, where would you go? Oh, you know, I would have to say London. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know that I can go now, but yeah, London, you know, I, there's, there's, there's a peacefulness about it. Um, the culture I love not to mention the accents i'm yeah. a, i'm a just you know what i mean it, because everything they say sounds new even though they i know they're speaking english but something new so um london or australia would be my places that i would go to awesome shallow this has been so much fun um how do people connect with you what's the best way to connect up with you um definitely my website uh, you can complete a form there chelladiaz.com c-h-e-l-l-a-d-i-a-z.com linkedin you can find me on linkedin yeah, right that's um, where you're hanging out these days <laughs> <laughs> that's what we here now but my facebook i i show up on my facebook every day transcend abundance i answer questions there i do facebook lives i do a lot of different tips um so definitely check out transcend abundance whichever you know, whether my website, LinkedIn, or Transcend Abundance on Facebook, um, reach out, ask questions. We are here to help you get your business to the next level. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on with me and sharing so much of your wisdom and tips. I know it's so needed and, and it's been such a fun conversation. So I so appreciate you taking time and meeting with I me. I love it when just one hour flies. <laughs> right? I know it goes so fast. <laughs> Thank you, Darlene. It's been a pleasure being here. And I really do. My wish is for your listeners to take action. If you heard thing that resonates with you, take action, do something, take that baby step. One baby step at a time is going to get you a lot further than if you do nothing.